Good evening, everyone. I am... Ooh, I'm two minutes early, but uh, you get me to waffle for two minutes. Good evening, everyone. We already have Reese, um, Van, I met, um, Captain Rex. Ooh, good to see your names back. Uh, K, good chat today, mate. Some great ideas. And Tomo, good to see you as well. Um, oh, wow, you didn't even get me chance. Uh, okay, didn't know that came up there. Hi, Peckish. I have a question. How loud is that? Is that too loud or is that, do we need, did we fix that? I think we fixed that. Uh, last time we did that, we woke up the entire neighbourhood. Um, the, the new snazzy bits of people subbing, donating and stuff like that. There was there was no... Uh, okay, might have to look at that one as well. Um, so it does... It does tend to go quite loud, but I don't know if I've got it set up right. I will have a look. Um, that's all set. We are just about on the proper time of going live, so already at 12 people, wow. Thank you everyone for joining in so early. <sighs> it, it's been a bit of a, another bit of a rush today because we've had uh, a load of stock went up onto the website. <sighs> Hello Martin. I don't even get me started today on you. <laughs> Thank you, Reese. Uh, we we've changed quite a bit around. Hopefully for the better. A lot of spaceship. Otherwise, oh, I see an alien. I don't know what alien you're on about. Um, there may be a video coming about the alien. Love you too, Martin. It's about time I got to see you because there's a pile of cards here for you to come and get. So. <laughs> So, uh, tonight we have got, uh, we've still got the Mythos stuff on the table, so I've still got my Rock Golem to finish. And I've got Spidey to start. Jack's not here yet, so I can't start that without Jack, but I've still got all the other Mythos stuff. Hey Zoe, hi Jack, wow, well, we were just talking about you. Um... <laughs> So, if we hit over to the painting stream, hey, everything moves and flies around. <laughs> so, we have, as I said, we have a new setup. All the new things. We have, I'm trying to get this right, stuff down, down here. Uh, we'll hold the donations. So at the moment, the last donation was made by Doom Fairies. Thank you very much, Doom Fairies. And the top donator, I don't know if it's blah, 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 uh, all locked up, but um, it's also got the top donator for the last, I think it's last 14 days, but we were working on stuff like that. Um, up there, <laughs> I can do it that way, look. Uh, the latest subscriber was Captain Rex. Thank you very much. And our latest vol follower was Jaxus Vibe, which is up there. So, yeah. Some of the other things, we were, obviously, with painting, we were looking at ways to improve it and stuff like that. So, rather than losing it and having a, a transition where it vanishes, we've now got transitions that actually hold the camera into the right place during it all. Hello, Foxy. So we've basically got the ability to move stuff around without having too much disappearing. We've got the music in place now. We have got other things that Foxy's working on in the background, all new stuff coming along. Um, We've got other bits and pieces that we want to do. So at the moment, you get me painting. There's some mini games that we've been looking at. 
Um, thanks to Van, who was further up in the stream chat. On the main screen, we've also got rid of a lot of the, all of the, um, uh, the Streamlabs stuff. He's down there as well now. <laughs> so we've picked up a lot of good ideas from Van and and utilised them on our stream. No worries, mate. And then, yeah, get back to some painting and gubbins and stuff like that. So we have these guys uh, that we've been working on. Uh, it is a game called Mythos. These are the Priory. So there is, it's like a mini warband. And there's six figures in the set. We had them on last night. Um, it's a cool little... Uh, indie game so these are all there's a lot to do with like a mining and stuff like that 40k objectives cool I know a company that can print them if you want some um, <laughs> so we've got them there's a cat that I've part done all of he's got a, a, gr a gray dry brush over him for now and then I'm gonna do some more bits and pieces and then the big brute of the thing so it's a bit of a skirmish game. There's six or seven factions out at the moment. We've got them all in stock, if anyone does want them. Um, and it's just a little bit of fun, rather than a lot of the serious games out there. He says. Um, and I'll go to close-up. The red, th red thing I printed. Oh, um, I showed off. Uh, yeah, she's right. She she will keep me right. The red thing. Yes, Van. Um, by the way, Mini Grand Moff is one's daughter. Um, there is a Mrs. Grand Moff kicking about that sometimes comes on that is the wife. And they're both on here to keep me right. So, you all saw that we'd done... If you'd watched the... <laughs> Um, stream last night we've done the red grass gaming stand that holds the figures and the big dude tends to spin around in it um, these are all and supply drinks she hasn't done me a lot it for ages Captain Rex it's disgraceful <coughs> um, so yeah we've done that and these hold the handles you've all seen my old one that I had that had the GW handles, but we've moved away from the GW handles. I've just been informed my my other handles, uh, the red grass gaming ones, are coming. So we've gone from that, and as you can see, a lot smaller. Um, takes up a lot less space on the the bench. I, I need a I need a moving cam setting up. Um, so now I've got this on the back of the bench. Um, I can drop. I tend to have figures already on the the bot the things in there but we've been because in the shop area and out the back we've got <laughs> and a bacon buddy don't say that snow you'll appear so yes i've been looking for a dis to make a display to put the um, brushes in so they don't get damaged before i ship them out and sell them and there is none there's just none anywhere so I had the great idea of extending that. So I've extended that up. And Tat and James, welcome. And then we have now, um, I will be putting these onto stock tomorrow or tonight, a Protec Models paper shoulder. Yeah, if you say it three times, you will appear. So yeah, um, I've now I've now got uh, it is definitely two steaks and no bacon butties. So yeah, it's three D printed. Um, we'll only do a couple in the chili red, <coughs> and I say it just. I am going to move my at the moment. My brushes are in such a state. That's my brush pot. So. Because of Zoe, you now get to see me sort some brushes out. 
yes you shouldn't be losing brushes anyway uh, but you can separate stuff into different uh, pots so obviously I've got a lot of dry brushes and I do tend to use different ones for different things so having them all set up I thought that was a bit sharp that's a knife Um, then I've got all my army painter ones in one part at the back, all my dry brushes, wash brushes, uh, these are non-broken toad, and I can have all my broken toad in one pot. Uh, oh, that's another one of them. There we go. In there. And then, as you say, sorted. Cool. Um, I think they're going to be between 15 and 20 pound. Uh, it depends on. Uh, I'm going to redesign some of it, I think. Uh, yeah, I might have a bit of a. I need a bit of a. Just a slight change. I might make it a bit deeper. So the bushes fit in and then obviously I can get rid of this. So who ha who else has flashbacks of the cup? If anyone wants a demonstration of the cup, <laughs> we had this at a um, event. Martin remembers the event. So we were using it as a dice shaker. So I'll, I'll just use some D6s. So there was two or three of us using these at um, one of the events. And you, you can watch Raster in one of the finals. And every time me or I think it was Steve flashbacks of King giggling like a school <laughs> yeah because there's videos as all, all you can hear in the videos all day is me Ken and Stay and a few others just going <laughs> and the whole room just turning around and looking at us they were amazing and they were 50p <laughs> and mine's been a cup holder a brush holder ever since um so yes they actually won the team championship that year but they didn't win it without the racket of me in the background so i'll do some painting and not make people annoyed hi james <laughs> <laughs> We know we can be loved in many, many, many ways. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I'm back to the big brute. I need some leather pa straps painting in. So, we will go for some leathery brown. Look at this. I'm going to even treat myself to a new palette. Brand new. Never used. Oh, camera flaring palette. Leather brown. I just want plain leather brown. <laughs> I believe someone did make metal. Um, metal dice. For X Wing, I'm almost certain someone's got a set. So I'm using um, Gamer Leather Brown. To literally only just lighten it up. Well, I'm going to change them because they're steaming up.
Yeah. So just leaving a little gap at the edge so you've got some shading already done and you don't have to go back over it all with a wash if you don't want to. So that goes around and there's a strap on his leg. The thing is if you're keeping it light you get, as you can see there, you get some of the dry brush through which gives it the the pre-shaded, pre-highlighted. So I'm gonna get a bit under her and then just run it down the edge of that. It doesn't need to go up into the the metal work. Times like this I wish I'd left the weapon off. the work around his bum bum straps there you go Martin said a rude word for you so again just putting it on lightly if you don't have the air range and you just have the normal range like I know Tomo does um, you just thin it a bit. <laughs> we we had someone who used to use dice a dice cup at beanies um and it could get quite annoying i i understand how annoying it can be um but when you're in a room with 150 other x-wing idiots they already know what an idiot I am anyway, so they know they're going to have some sort of annoyance over the weekend. So there's more strap around that leg. And a little bit under that. So I'm considering doing a stream tomorrow night. I'm going to do a monster apocalypse figure um, so I've got one of two options on how to do it I can do one of my figures which is going to be one of the um, the apes so we've already done a couple of the blue apes um, so I can do, obviously not do another blue one, but there is other ones in the uh, the range. Or would someone like to see another one done? We have basically all of it in stock from what I can tell. Uh, I don't think I'm out of stock of anything. So if anyone wants to see... Damn dirty apes. So if anyone wants to see something else done, 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 um, have a quick run over at the website, see what uh, Monpok monsters there is, and I'll drag one out of stock and paint it up if you want. 
See if I can get it done in a stream. So on the top bit, because the leather's quite thick, what I've done is I've just edge highlighted it because it's dark in there because of the um, the dry brush showing all that up. So I've just done an edge highlight on the top edge. I don't know if you can see that. that arm just not as visible as it is over the other side I don't know if you saw Snowy, but Vans put a link up in the Discord for you for um, that game that you wanted to look at. This time you can't blame me because Vans definitely put it up. It's got his name and everything on it. So, that's it, Signum. I can see your name on it. I want to do... I need to do a wash on his uh, clothing first. Orange clothing. Do I do a... Uh, Cassandra yellow. Fugan orange. I've never used this, I don't think. <laughs> Shields up, deflecting your signum. <laughs> Wasn't me. You cannot definitely 100% unequivocally. I'll even put it up on the stream if people don't believe me. Wasn't me this time. Or any other time. As a matter of fact. Uh, I'm just putting some glass beads into uh, my uh, Fugan Orange because I've never used it. Uh, yep. Definitely Van that says it. I can see it with my own eyes. He's an interesting one, Foxy. Have we tried um, acquiring Signum as a viable friend? You know, a two, two player starter self then would be fantastic. <laughs> so, um,
So just adding a bit of wash to the orange to give it a bit of, I might actually add a bit of brown to it as well once the orange is dry. Just to give it a bit of, because obviously he's not the cleanest of creatures. gonna wash the body of the golem um, the glass beads go into uh, some of the paints and some of the washes and it works which works called an agitator uh, when you shake it up on the bottom you can see there is paint residue in the the wash this actually just helps mix it up makes it easier to mix up again we do them in the in the shop they're not too expensive um, I think it's a few quid for um, I think we do so did them in packs of 50 so a couple of quid for a pack of 50 Something like two or three quid so Yeah, I'm going to do a brown wash of that because the, the orange is really popping. Um, just to get it a bit dirtier. There we go. So... I'll tell you what I was going to do is move that to here. So what I've got at the moment is under this board I have a metal ruler. So the magnetic strip on this works so I don't keep knocking it over. Um, do I go for the... See, that's got it in as well, but it had all actually stuck to the bottom of the paint pot. So, is that too much of a bright colour? Ooh, cool. You know what? You only live once. See how that dries. I might need to put a white line down the center of each one of them. What is that bright? I have a Globicus spare. Um, it could be one I could do tomorrow night. I was going to try it in that purple colour, but the purple colour didn't work when we tested it. <sighs> right. 
right. So I can't do anything with that. I need to do something with the ropes. I need a string colour or a rope colour. Leather brown's a bit too. Um, weathered wood. Weathered wood. Where's weathered wood? The weathered wood. So, again, what I was on about yesterday going for. certain colours that just work last time I did this I broke some figures so I'm trying to be careful and shake well acrylic Does it? yeah weathered wood with a weathered wood yeah so it is um, secret weapon and it's a grey brownie colour that really does well for like cloth and I've never even opened this one as I was mentioning to Tomo the, there's certain colours that have quite a high pigment that do well at coating this is again weathered wood it's so good it won't even come out the bottom But it'll ah, stab me in the weathered wood. Thank you for the follow, Alex. So, what I'm going to do here is on all of. I'm going to pop this off the base so I can actually. Um, on all of the metal bits there was uh, some basically some string I'm going to do is coat them all with a little bit of the weathered wood need some thinners to my standard airbrush thinners um for the, I could probably just use the. I'm going to wash this with uh, sepia anyway, so you could probably just use bone uh, and any bone type color. This isn't far off the bone. It's just it's. We were discussing it yesterday, mate. Um, it's just one of those weird paints that fulfills a role really well, and this covers. So you can cover black with this, and it's really good. Um, but if you've got if you've got the bone colour, then there's no reason that you can't be using that. Again, this is to more more help out speed painting, where you've got a lot to do. I think we did it on mummy robes. It was the first time we needed a lot of mummy robes doing quickly. And um, wait for Martin's joke. And it just covered. We'd done one job over Christmas and New Year for FFG. And we actually made some um, really, really good white paint. I have no idea where it's gone. We used the Terminatus Stone from the foundation paints and then added a full pot of the Artis Artisifer tint set to it. I'm not kidding you, there wasn't much that that wouldn't have coated in one go. But it just meant that we were doing a lot less work to do any parchment or anything like that it was hammered through in no time and I have been contrasts are absolutely brilliant especially for 
speed painting and commission painting and stuff like that there are a massive amazing tool that sounded wrong a great something good to use um, but you start hitting problems on streams with drying time so I could, I could put something down at the start of the stream in a contrast and it'll probably take a good 15 minutes of the stream just to get that to dry so I have been steering away from it a bit except for things like the blacks in the recesses and stuff like that where I would be using a wash um, I've been using the Templars one So, the reason that we have the Discord coming up in the chat now is we do a section of um, painting by you lot. If you've got something coming along or something that you're working on. This is not a section where Van or Russell starts to try and get me to play other games by putting shiny pictures in front of me being the weak-minded fool that I am going oh I want to play that um, I know your game uh, I uh, I get to see what people are working on I can show people what you're working on So if you go over to our Discord channel, there is a gallery section. I think we've got one in there. Yeah. Mr. Fairbrother put something in there yesterday. Um, so we'll be putting them up on the stream if people put them up. It just gives me five minutes to have a break from the painting um, and have a quick chat. just so many these look like as I said last night these look like ferrite cars he's just been to a PC store and nicked everyone's ferrite car I think Old Thang Grey would have worked here as well. Um, Tomo, it's the similar sort of thing. I've just gone for a more brownier one. Old Thang can be bluey in colour. I really want a Yorkshire pie. Oh, you want to see what. Um, Snowy found the Yorkshire Pie Company. Oh my word, they look phenomenal. Delivered to your door, they come frozen. They take, I think, 20 or 30 minutes to cook from frozen. Oh, to, they've got multi awards and stuff like that. Now I'm hungry. YouTube. <sighs> There's always one. Can't drool on the mini. It adds glistening. <laughs> mm. 
I say, we're just picking them all up. What is like, it looks like cord or rope or just whatever's holding these cores onto the body. And that glow is actually starting to <laughs> really work now. I was net. I was late to Facebook level up, let alone MySpace. Yeah, I used to use MSN, not much, but uh, for gaming and stuff like that. We used to use, oh god, what they're called, DOS based chat rooms for playing online games and stuff like that, I can't remember what they are, what they were called. They probably still exist somewhere. Last one, I think. So obviously after I did this last night, I had a great idea about getting all of the runes to glow. So what we're going to do is, I was going to use the whitewash and run the whitewash in all of the little recesses. Then I looked at his and it wasn't that... Um, it wasn't that impressive, so let me just try that out. I just remembered I needed to check something about, um, so that's just catching that. So Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the one. There was settings. Yeah, the the setting was there to turn off the announcements, Foxy, for Pretzel. So I have done that. So what I want is not to knock the camera as much as I just did there. It's very, very, very carefully looking for my
So this is my size zero by Broken Toads. So I'm just adding some highlights to the green but in pure white so it gives it a glow effect I don't know if my head's too much in the way there some more green in there I'm just not going to get that and that's gone a little a little bit too too bright for my liking so I'll drop some of the green back in if I can find it there we go thing is probably size two oh, something a bit bigger let's go with a size one well I thought I'd stopped it <laughs> uh, so Reichland flesh or seraphin sepia or off sepia Go for one of our snazzy holders again. So just all of the bandaging and all of the metal that's around that I want in the sepia to give it a brown, an extra brown tint on top of the normal metal. in it as well because that might just give the extra little bit that it needed to yeah and also blend it in together a bit as well So these are for me anyway, so I really don't want to go spending 100 hours on each one of the pieces. So I think I need to do, <coughs> excuse me, something with the eyes. I think once I've got the eyes... Maybe it's the same sort of glow. 
Um, then on the basing, it is not far off ready for the table. sockets um, I've got the weathered wood out I might as well use it I nearly did a really big mistake because I had a cool idea of um, having the lamp and then having it lit and then I realised that on the bottom there is the what's the trailing lead of what's left of the uh, wiring for it. <laughs> So I can either leave them that colour <coughs> or I can actually do them in the same glow as his chest. I think he's going to get glowing eyes. So I've basically I've filled the socket with the glowing stuff, <laughs> the Tesseract Glow. And then... What I'll do is when it dries, I'll get a dot back on the eye, I think. Sweet. Thank you, Foxy. That looks cool now. I did fail in turning the uh, pretzel rocks thing off. Um, I don't know if I meant to save it. Or stop it and start it. I might have to stop and start it. No, uh, 
we're just changing a while we're both on Foxy's doing a load of um, changes in the background. We're going to try something else tomorrow night. I don't know if you're going to be around. Uh, we're going to try a prize wall. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So tomorrow night, we're going to do a bit more of a chatty stream. If I could possibly get more of a chatty stream. Um, a little bit of painting of Monpok. And some... Um, bit of a sales giveaway. One of our local lads is doing it in his comic book shop. And it's proving to be quite fun and quite funny. Um, and we're also going to use it on our 24 hour live stream. So hopefully this is going to be a bit of a tester for it tomorrow night we were going to do it tonight but I got <laughs> so yeah um, I have a couple of plans for some some little bits of giveaways a little bit of sale a little bit of giveaway um, it James is using it really well, and it, it looks as though it's, it's, he's having fun. Right, well, I was just about to get some earth. Uh, I'm going to use my, because I'm doing it quick, because I'm doing it fast again, I'm going to use my standard um, earth with brown tufts on. Uh, do, do, do. Where's my... So, so I'm just using um, Vallejo Brown Earth as usual. My favourite of all peanut butter. Oops, press wrong buttons. There we go. Do like the lips on these um, bases. It's probably because I've not painted much other than um, GW or FFG bases. another tub of it. I wonder if I've got any in stock. I may have to get some orders in. Uh, we have some new stock in today. Um, as I was saying earlier, we've had um, three shipments of X-Wing ships that we've just put up for sale. Uh, some new in pack newish in packets uh, the ships were brand spanking new but we've added all of the uh, cards to it we got a lot of damaged a lot of damaged boxes so the card stock was pretty much ruined so we've took a load of our stock and made some um, uh, some quick simple bits and pieces up so we've got loads of x-wing uh, second hand expansions, just miniatures on the own. We do have a lot of Legion to go in as well. That will be probably over the weekend. In between streaming and stuff. So there we go. Oh yes, have you had a chance to have a look at them? So me and Foxy have bought um, Infinity. 
which to me they look very much like I've lost my cleaning stick. Oh, there we go. Um, the very towel-like and Jack appears. So I'm pretty much done on that for a little bit. So we've done the clever thing and we've split, we've gone for cord one, which is a skirmish version of it. And we've, we may have got another couple of people involved and interested. I know Jack was hovering around having a look, but we can't recommend enough to buy it with a friend, like two of you buy half of it each sort of thing. I'm looking around and I think I've packed mine away somewhere. I've packed mine away really well, Foxy. Horribly wrong if I break things. Yep. Okay. So that is half of. You didn't see the support pack. Didn't buy a support pack extra. Honest. Um, Operation Cold Storm. So this is the basic bit of fluff and then some missions so we're going to play through some of the missions yes the one of the lead designers has actually said it's Americanized anime I did store them in Narnia <laughs> so the code one rule book um, it's all nice and shiny I haven't opened mine yet and it's not that thick, I think something like it. with discount about 10 or 12 quid. Um, and in the, the Caldstrom box, you get. I do have the new boxes here. I showed, I showed a bit of it last night. So you basically get that, which is quite a thick box. It has two, two factions in. Oh, cool, I'll pull that up in a minute, mate. So, rubbing these under Jack's nose. So, um, look. Tau-based ninja warriors from space. So, yeah, you get two factions in there, but you also get a scenery set. No, I just thought, yeah, scenery set, bleh. Um, these are the scenery pieces. They're on really thick cardboard. Haven't built any yet, but I did pop one of them out. They're really good quality. Um, quite impressed with that. So you get that scenery set. Uh, we are trying to find a second scenery set. So we both have a full set of uh, tokens and stuff each. There is the Caldstrom box. This basically expands... <laughs> this expands the big box into full-blown infinity. So you've got one full crew for the full-blown infinity. Then you can get, like, the Yujing support pack, which is a four person pack, just a couple of little bits extra. And I'm playing Yujing. There is a Pan Oceanic one. <laughs> so, um, this I've obviously split mine with Foxy, so a lot of it has gone um, to him, half of it's gone to him. So, you get a set of dice, faction specific. The promos that we are giving away as part of um, anyone buying anything for the first couple while we've still got them is a silhouette marker which is in really really nice acrylic um, and it cord one infinity velcro patch and a I don't know which way up it goes there it is a pin for a warrior but all the minis are metal. 
and the quality of them is really really good so you can see the keyway in that the full keyway fits into there and boom he's built obviously you need to glue him to bases but a couple of bits of flashing as usual with metal and a bit of clean up but there's a good heft to them the good solid miniatures and look at that for a um, it's a female officer. Thank you for hosting Doom Fairies. So yeah, and all the minis are metal. Um, yeah, I think you get... If you buy both boxes, you get quite a lot. So there's like one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven. It's seven in the main box, three in the small box. So that's basically what you get. I really have made a mess of this green screen and everything because I can start seeing stuff waving in the background and all up there where I've messed it up. And it's no longer tight and tight. No better. Fixed it. So the game looks really interesting. Um, it works off D20 system. Uh, you roll attack and defense, and uh, you've got to beat certain values to do damage. Uh, we're going to try and build a board for it. Snowy's got a load of it um, coming, or oh, we'll be here this weekend, hopefully. So, yeah. I just wanted to show a couple of people what it was. So, let's try this. We have... Oh, first one, he's not on at the moment, so... Uh, Mark has done a, a... Primaris Shield Captain. I do love the red. Red and gold. Oh, red and, is it, yeah, it looks goldy colour. It looks like the... The older version of GW's gold. Looks nice. And exactly where a Necron should be, in the floor, in bits. Ready just to jump up and come back together. Um, so, the red is sweet. The next one is what Jax had made for him. Look at that. Name and everything. So, it's Mr. Magoo's suitcase. What does it do? It opens up and becomes a tray. And a storage system. So Jack can take this away. Full of paints and minis. And basically paint as much as he wants. There we go. One in use. That is pretty smart, mate. And I do agree with uh, Foxy, not jealous much. So Jack's agreed to do a... No, he hasn't. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty smart, Jack. And it's perfect. As as you say, your brother's made you it. It is perfect for what you wanted. It does look a cracking job. So as I say, if people want to put up... Uh, photos um, we here's some from last night in case people missed uh, we had the original one this was a gift for me from Ian this was my black dwarf that I did a while back for a competition um, Craig's gin over on the yep over on that Discord channel that Foxy's put up. Um, K did this with his hammer conversions. So it's one of the shield captains with a huge hammer. And then a huger hammer on uh, one of his converted flamer toting um, salamanders. And then another one from Jack. 
some great tower work. Don't you think that would, that colour scheme would look great on um, Infinity Models Foxing? Sorry. Uh, and then this was by Dave. And they are Silver Templars. I forgot to get the boxes out today and have a look. Have another look at the Silver Templars stuff. I know Foxy's doing a, silver, a couple of Silver Templars. Templars. <laughs> And then these are Van's Infinity models. He's gone with the black and red. I do like the black and red. I've got a nasty feeling I could end up with black and red. I know they're an orange scheme. Oh, black and orange. Yeah. And then there's some horrible miniatures that we don't want to discuss because people getting us involved they're twisted and they're a great bunch of guys that are sending us loads of nice shiny stuff to stock and then <sighs> this was naughty russell i oh, know that was naughty van the, f the one before that was russell so yeah if you want any stuff showing off any pictures putting up get them dropped into the gallery section in um in the discord channel and we will show them off for you and we still need to discuss the alien in the room that is trippy as anything so um he's done that i need the cat on a base do i need the cat on a base or is the cat going to be on a base for two seconds and then On a base. <laughs> Having a look at the colours that I've got to try and match what he did but then other people have just done totally different colours like one of them's done a lion type looking one and that looked class I think Tomo shared it today didn't he let me just have a quick look I don't know where the picture from Tomo is. It should be here. Ah, I wonder if it was in the group shop. It is, there it is. So it is, yeah, it's like leopardy. Yeah, um, I have seen them done in black. Is there a collar on there? It's he's got a metallic collar and a. I don't know. I just think something like a dry brush of a. Is it because the lionish coloured one looks cool? And I would go straight for Sigma right if I was doing that, but I don't want even golden lion. Tyrant skull on a dry. Yeah, I could try that. Oh, my dry's gone very extremely dry. Do 
rub it into the brush to get a light coat on it. There's a lot of detail that you just don't see in the black. Oh, don't even start with what. Speak to me, Kate. What infinity scenery have we got? The beast has been awakened. I have a great plan for this. So if I dry brush it with the, um, which I need some more because that is really going hard, Tyrant Skull, to get quite a, make it almost a base coat down. Also, leaving the underbelly or a lot of the underbelly in the black yeah quite a bit Tom So, the plan is, because it is quite, it looks like a bone cat now. Bone cat, bony, just bone coloured cat. Um, so, I'll get this cleaned up. And this is where it could go horribly wrong, and usually does is Reichlin Flesh Shed <laughs> we are very lacking on scenery there we go I need 
need a lot of that on so it starts dripping off at the moment we've got my pack I think I know Steve's got his own pack as well but we could do with uh, scenery for for playing that has given it a not yellow enough um, Apparently you need a lot of line blocking, line of sight blocking for it. So I'm mixing some Cassandra yellow into it as well. But there we go. That suddenly goes bright colours that we wanted. So let's have some of that mixed in. That's more like it. The le like a, a leopard skin part. The skin looks very lizard like. I don't know if you can see if it, it's not going close enough, but it's got lots of like lines across it. And it looks cool. I'm just trying to highlight that as much as I can take it off the base as much hmm yep it's pretty much the base colour but that's not going to dry anytime soon uh, we've got another couple of figures to do from that range as well. Uh, I haven't even got round to uh, building them up yet. Yeah, priming them up or anything like that. So, um, priming. What time is it? Half past. I've got plenty of time. So, the priming, what we're going to do is since I'm going to get the airbrush it with it. Yes, it's cool. Um, so what do I have for? I've got those three there. Ah, Spidey as well. Spidey needs to be done in white. And I'm thinking of doing the rest in black. So, I'll get my knife. Oh, I had my knife out. There it is. Clean some of the uh, mold lines and such like, if they have any. Come on, kitty. So these guys are pretty good with the mold lines. The mold lines are in places that like the big one there is ran down right down the edge of the the girder so it doesn't really matter. Um, and the pieces where the joint together tend to be the mold line. He does look pretty. He's pretty sturdy on there as well. We're all good. What I am going to do is take it off my nice new um, base for now. So I'm not um, future found. I'm doing the stat. We've just discussed this. I'm doing the standard colours for. Uh, the figures. Right. And they are pretty much done as well. Because 
I even wire brush these ones. some airbrushiness on so I need to do white on spidey first so so I don't need to do too much of a clean I'll do the white in the first run <laughs> You know these don't belong to me. <laughs> and I, I'm doing all of the Mar uh, all of the Marvel Crisis stuff. I'm actually doing for someone, so just sticking he random heads and Rubik's cubes and stuff on stuff might not go down too well. So a normal Spider-Man. Yeah, I need to do it all. So. so I'm doing this away from my bench because I don't want my um, nice shiny streamers mat covered in um, airbrush paint. Spidey, white, very bright white spidey. And then loads of white left in the spray. <laughs> ah, da, da, da. Everyone likes spider. through with the cleaner don't have to go too overboard because see, I'm just going straight back onto primer and it's the same manufacturer and it's the same stuff and it's just a different color clean up the part That's the biggest comment we get when we talk about airbrushing. Oh, changing between one colour and another colour takes half an hour. You've got to strip the airbrush down and clean it all. And Once you get used to it, know what you can and can't do. You'll soon know that you've made a mistake because it'll just block it and you won't be able to do anything with it. And then you've just got to strip it and clean it. But that's when you're stripping and cleaning. This is meant to be grey, uh, black, not grey. What did I want the grey? The grey. I know what I wanted the grey for. Um, so, obviously, Spider Man's base needs to be grey. And I've been getting some really smooth um, basing on the past ones that I've done. So I don't want to be putting brush strokes under this one. So. I'm 
That's it. Two second blast through with the airbrush, and you've got Grey Burst again, and you've got Spider Monster on it. In white. And then we go for the black. Again, all the same manufacturer. It's all. Uh, it's all Badger's primer. So it, the Badger primer hardly re reacts with anything anyway. So I can't see it reacting with its own stuff. Uh, let's have some black. We just decant it into small bottles, and then we can uh, continue on. Let me just have a quick look at something. Uh, right. So, when I'm batch priming, I tend to hold them by the head. And get the base done. So you've got the base and the bottom half done. And then go up the next one. Hold it by the head. Go again. Next one. Hey, oh, that's got great primer on it. Who did that? If you've got a place to do airbrushing, then it's one of the tools that there is an initial outlay, and you're talking a couple of hundred pounds to get a reasonable setup. Um, that reasonable setup, if you're doing enough painting within six months of just priming, it'll probably pay for itself twice over. When I was, obviously when I was doing a lot of commissions, I was using GW rattle cans and the price just kept going up and up and up and up and up. So it got to the point where it was, when I was doing airbrushing, uh, when I was doing the rattle cans, it just outweighed the, a lot of the cost. Uh, and I found I'd have to put extra on just to do different colors and stuff like that. Where with the airbrush, Badger do, um, Pretty much all the colours anyway, they're not as perfectly matched to um, Ultramarines as the GW1 is or that sort of stuff. But it gives you the ability to only use 5 mil and you don't waste a load by vaporising in the atmosphere. I think this is a 10 mil holder in the top and so far I've done uh, two full miniatures and two half miniatures. I should get all of them done out of it. As he runs out. I think when I got this, we bought the litre tubs of it, and the litre tubs were 25 quid. And the guy got it from Steve, he said it, it, it was the equivalent of uh, in excess of 50 cans, and I didn't believe him at first. Uh, and I said, that's still got paint left in the bottom that I should really use on something. Um, Again, it's it's 
basically a lot more economical than a rattle can. So four figures and half a worm. I'm gonna have to put him there now because he's wet. And then you just, I have a bucket beside me and I clean off in the bucket. Uh, and I'm only doing the expensive spray through cleaner is because I have my normal bucket of, uh, my normal bottle of water's empty. Um, so I use a, just a, like a squeegee and you squirt it in so i've got a one that isn't this is just spray through cleaner this does take the paint out of the, the cap uh, out of the brush quite well and failing that someone look i've got magic pixies in here someone's filled my uh, water and that's just plain water out the tap and i run the plain water through it first and then normally do the the cleaner afterwards if you get a clog or anything like that um, and you can't get it cleaned out you can obviously strip it if you want, but I also use this, which is Spray Crafts, and that's got, that's more alcohol based, so it can get rid of um, a lot of stuff. With not much hassle. You'll see me squirt that in when I start. If I hadn't used that today, and it had got sticky, I'll just drop a squirt of that into it, blow it through. I can't wait for mine. Uh, me and Foxy got birthday editions. With the birthday editions, or Father Day, Father's Day editions of the Sotars. The Sotar is just the, the version of um, Badger Airbrush. Uh, there is three different versions at the moment. There's the fine one with the. The fine one, I've got the setups. So that's the fine needle and fine nozzle, and that's the medium. So the medium should be in that cup. Independence Day. Was it Independence Day? Oh, cool. Uh, and then the fluted one was for the uh, precise. Then they did a slim. So it's literally two or three drops in the top, and that is, that's the one that I use for my super fine details. Now, these are usually £120 in the UK. You can sometimes pick them up for a hundred pound. That worth every penny of it. Uh, but um, Ken at Badger, the owner of Badger, does birthday editions and stuff like that. And I missed the D6, and there was only the father's run. I don't know how many it was for, but he stuck a limited run through, and me and Foxy managed to get one each. And there were there were like fifty six dollars. Plus, uh, did we pay delivery? I think not much. Um, we'll probably get hit for import when they come into the country, but we're still way below what we would have paid in the UK, and it's a nice shiny limited edition gold one. Um, on the other end of the scale, there's a company called Infinity, uh, sorry, Harder and Steinbeck, who do the Infinity CR Plus. Now, I, I looked into this. Um, I'll try and do a close-up with a needle on this. This was just one of those things that... That is the needle on that. It is super fine. Now, I've drawn lines on banners with this. Yeah, I've got infinity. It is. It's an infinity CR plus. So that's infi no, infinity. Infinity. Um, this does go down. <clears throat> you've got to thin the paint well enough to do it. But this goes down to half a mil, um, half a mil lines, and is absolutely phenomenal. But it's not for everyday use. It's not one that you use day in day out stuff like that. It's got upgrade options that you got in the box of different cup sizes you can go to a very small one like the the one that I've got in there um, but the build on it the cut the gold colors and stuff like that that needs a clean naughty Lee so yeah and it also comes with a very very nice 
metal cap to stop you breaking them. Uh, but that being said, it's probably my most expensive airbrush that doesn't see half of... Well, I wouldn't even say a tenth of the use of the Sortars. The Sortars just do a really good job. They're a good workhorse. And that's why I've obviously recommended Foxy get one. And then if anything goes wrong, I've also got a box of spares and I've got enough knowledge and time to actually help and fix stuff. So, what else was I going to do with these different to him? Uh... Yeah, I wish. You're okay, mate, because he does them. If you keep an eye on his um, web page, in America, the $56 delivered anywhere in the US. You should be getting them for us. <sighs> I can't believe that you're in America and you can't use the badger stuffs. Compressor, there's yeah, there's there's levels of compressors. Um, what what did I water Eclipse? That one. That is the HPCS. Um, I can't get away with it. It's just one of those things. It's actually sat here holding my um, spare rings on because it's just sat doing nothing. Uh, one of them may go into a box because I've got a six airbrush rack there. And I've got six airbrushes. So I've got three sorters. I've got a Patriot for really heavy, um, really heavy set paint. You can see it's got some of the thick stuff still in there um, that's for metallics and really really thick stuff um, and then I've got another expensive one that I've had this is probably my oldest my Renegade Chrome I used to use this for um, airbrushing RC model uh, body shells and this I really enjoyed using this one back then but as soon as I found out about the, the 2020, it was absolutely phenomenal. Let me have a look. Yeah, it's the AS186 design. Uh, you've got 326CT. Um, yeah, there's... The compressor, yeah, I wouldn't say the compressor is a cheap one. It's just a, it, it's a design that everyone used. Um, I've got a Spear Max. If you took the Spear Max out of the case, it looks very similar to that, Matt. They, yeah, they all do it. All do what they say they do. I had the, I had Chinese ones that were costing fifty to sixty pound, and that's what I've recommended uh, Foxy to get the the AS one eight six. And I hammered mine. I hammered it for two years and it only gave up at the end because I whizzed my chair around and I knocked one of the pipes off and snapped it actually off the um, the tank. So there wasn't much I could do with it. And for another, uh, I think by that time they were about £90 and I bought another one. Just exactly the same, no, no different. And I used it for probably eight months and then I got... I got a silly, silly deal from a very, very good friend uh, for the Harden Steinbach Infinity and the Spare Max compressor. Loads of bits and pieces like paints and cleaners and air hoses. Um, the the stand alone for this thing that it came with it is a thing of beauty. But they like the way a ton as well. But they like fifty odd quid, uh, and I got an absolute blistering deal. Uh, so, and that was the only reason I upgraded. Yeah, it's 
what I would like to do um, is it's the, yep you've got exactly the one that I've got in the garage the one that my expensive one is at its core the one that Foxy's got the one that Snowy's lent me as well because I've got a Snowy spur with me they're all very much similar the they pump up air, they hold it in a tank, and they spit it out. Um, and touch wood, I've not had any troubles with this one. Or, as I said, the only one that I broke was through stupidity. <sighs> right, we've still got yeah, still got time to do some more bits and pieces. Uh, what were we looking for? Uh, But as I said, just having it for the ability to prime models. Uh, and I know Jack, that's what Jack aimed for is uh, it's a great cheap way to prime models. And I've seen some of the stuff he's been doing with it since. And it's a much more than that now for Jack, which was what I was hoping. Um, anyone getting into it, picking up the airbrushing, it just... Yeah, it it just makes it a little bit. Um, bit, bit more digestible to buy one and then realise that you're saving a lot of money from the get go. Yes, and I may be I may be cheating the system by going. You know what? You would save loads of money by getting one of these, and then people go. Ah, I can do this and this and this. And then on top of that, I've actually convinced another person to use an airbrush. And on top of that, they can then start using it for what an airbrush. You've seen what I've done with an airbrush and just messing around. And it, it just works. Blending and stuff like that. But I'm a... I'm a huge i profess to everything has a use contrast contrast works metal color metal color has two great uses it goes amazingly through an airbrush but it also paints on really well not enough people promote it as a paint paint ulfan gray has a job the more things that you pick up and it's, I'm not necessarily saying you have to go out and buy every paint, every bit and piece going. But what I'm saying is if you buy the stuff, watch videos, not just me, watch other people's videos. Um, and they will give you hints and tips. That's how I get them. I, I watch other people's videos just as much as um, I sit and do them. Um, I've done hours of sitting watching... Um, Next Level Painting, Kenny Boucher, his stuff, his painting, airbrush work, I've probably picked up, I'd say 90% of my, and I know he's not everyone's cup of tea because of his, the way he uses language and stuff like that, the the jargon and stuff, um, but especially for us from the UK. It's very hard to understand. Um, but the core underneath whatever he's doing and stuff like that is absolutely phenomenal. You pick up so much just by watching what he's doing, listening to what he's doing, the tips, the things about um, painting it uh, to a certain level and then washing it. So if you paint it, if you plan on painting something to a certain level and then washing it down you lose a lot of the colour you lose a lot of the cleanliness when you apply a wash so if you're doing a wash then you take it to as his channel says you take it to the next level and then wash it back down so you take it to 11 and wash it back down to 10 and then you've got a solid um, paint job at the end of it but I wouldn't have understood half of this if I hadn't have just while I'm sat painting stick on a video 
learn something new, see something new. Me and Jack still need to look at this oil wash stuff. Um, because that really intrigues me. I've just not had enough time to actually... I've watched a lot of videos again. I know the principles, how it should work. But then getting me to actually get it to work is a whole different kettle of fish. So, the... Oh, sorry, guys. Right, I'll just quickly do do this bit and I'll uh, I'll have another quick look at any more bits in the gallery. So again, I did this before uh, for... Was it beanies I did this on? Or oh, mine? Um, and I just took the contrast blue and it just worked. It was absolutely astounding how vibrant the blue was. Um, and I did, I did it straight over white. I didn't use any of the contrast, um, primer. I just used the usual, or my usual, um, badger primer. And, um... Again, as I say, it just worked. The blue is really good. In contrast to that, hey, hey, is the purple. The purple just doesn't work. So I looked at I I did some purple work and then ended up going down the route of redoing it instead of using the contrast. I used uh, ink by. Uh, whose ink was it that I used? Pro Krill's Clear Purple, which is like a basically a clear paint, but an ink as well. Very inky in design. So now, if you get this done, and obviously I've done it right at the end because I know contrast takes a while to set and dry and flow into all of the gaps and stuff um, if you want to darken it off you would then just do a dragon off nightshade over the top of it and I'm going to have to clean a couple of bits up because my brush went onto the white so it's okay if you hit the ribbed bit because I'm going to paint that black but that's meant to be red just there and I caught it I didn't realise and again, oh, clumsy Dalton tonight. So as you can see already, the the blue settling into the leg muscles and stuff like that. Yes, you have got a very nice purple ink, matey. So what I'll do is I'll close that up. And should we see what Jack does? Oh. Back to the chatting. All the chatting. So, this is Jack's Monpok. It is the elemental. I can't remember which one. Um, there's my looking glasses that needs a whoosh sound effect incinerous that's it that is really nice mate it is it's a damn fine job It'll be almost a shame when one of my monkeys pick it up and smash it into a building. Uh, I don't know how many people have actually seen our Monster Apocalypse um, video that I did with Zoe some time ago. I'll put him over there, I'll go for now. Um, we did just the starter sets. Um, 
but I've gone down the route of uh, yeah, oh yes he's got green on him I forgot um, I've gone for the Ips faction that's right there um, oh his base is absolutely manky I'm still considering painting my bases. I don't care what anyone says. Um, but yeah, uh, I liked painting this so much, I actually bought a second one to paint just to put up for sale. So you can't use two of the same one, unfortunately, because I just had 10 of these fellas. Um, but it's a cracking game. Uh, I had one game of it with Zoe. We probably got half the rules wrong. Um, oh, it is only that. Uh, and it was still such a fun game, right up until the point where I threw a halfway across the board. So, yeah, I am looking forward to more of them. Uh, as Foxy saw tonight when he popped around to pick up some bits, uh, I do need to dig out the garage again because deliveries have arrived and everything's full. We're... We're not far off capacity of stock to um, actual space now. Yeah, it's a bigger scale. There's a lot more. It's just a lot more. Like, yeah. Uh, painting this fella has been pretty much similar. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. So, thank you for that, Jack. Much appreciated. Uh, so, painting this fella has a bit of the same he's now glowing eyes and stuff the glowing eyes have worked oh, cool um i think once that base is done i'm going to call him done but yeah the same thing with this uh tomo he's a lot bigger model there's a lot a lot more you could do to it um, I could go to town and I could start highlighting all of the little bits of the rocks, the, the rock six pack he's got sort of thing. But it's for a game that we'll probably play a handful of times a year at events and stuff like that, just between a couple of us. And it's a quick throw down fun game. Um, and that's all I'm painting it to, just to have it quickly done on the table, boom, and we're playing. Rather than just throwing it out and it's black or grey. Um, that's, that's what I like to push about this channel. We're, we're not here to do 100 hour paint jobs. I want, to, I want to get you guys painting. And I know some of my proudest things are Tomo and Jack and how much they paint now compared to when I first met them. Having them painting and showing me what they've done, having them painting and having less grey plastic mountain really, really does, like, it, it makes me feel warm inside. But you know what I mean. It means that I'm hopefully doing some good to get people's mountains of grey plastic down. And then, as I said, this time next year, I'll be watching Jack's videos. It's it's just how it is. I, I do understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people might not disagree. Uh, some people might not agree, but I do talk a lot, um, and I do. In I, I enjoy interaction with all you guys. I wouldn't do it otherwise. So. We'll get. I'll probably finish him off stream and just get some tufts and bases done. It has gone on quite thick to cover the lip, so I'm not going to get that uh, done tonight, unfortunately. I would have liked to. Kitty Cat is... Oh, he's just first planted. Kitty Cat has gone to the colour I want. Now I'm going to... He's still wet on his back and in some of the recesses, so I'm not going to... But then I'm, I'll, I'll do some dry brushing and some highlights again just to pick that up. Again, not going into five levels of highlights. I just want that done. Uh, I do have Corvus to do. 
Um, he's from my... Um, I need five painting. So obviously some of you know I'm going, hopefully going away in October to an event run by apparently a cracking bunch of lads who were trying to get me into all kinds of trouble in games. So I need my... I need four lots so far painting. One is my Mythos. Two is my... Marvel Crisis. Three is my Monpok. And four is my... Uh, Code One, which has just turned up. <laughs> yeah, you and you you'll end up doing more card designs and more ideas. Sorry about that. I just need to. <sighs> but whatever you get painted, mate, drop them in the gallery and I'll get them shown up. Right, we are at one minute past nine. Um, I'm going to call it there. We'll be back tomorrow. Um, uh, hopefully, and I'm going to write this down before I disappear. Yeah, I've seen the, the ones that you've been doing have been cracking, Matt. And it, the more people that are doing the hobby, the better. Whether it's Legion or whether it's, um, Monster Apocalypse mythos whatever you're painting it's it just good to do so so tomorrow night we're going to try the prize wall i'm not going to do it too silly i'm just going to have nine up there for tomorrow if it works out um, i'm hoping to have can i get a do you think i get a camera there possibly so i'm going to try and get a second third camera fourth camera because I do have one here that one actually might work uh, and what I want is a board for prize wall um, and the general thing is it's a it's a bit of fun that our local comic book guy did there'll be depending on how big I can make the board I don't know if that'll actually fit ah oh, it's just too a board is just too small so, what we're going to have is probably between 9 and 24 things. And you basically buy um, a ticket from our website, and that relates to one of the numbers. On the stream, I open it up, and you can win all sorts. We're going, we have some really, really nice prizes that um, K has provided. We have some really nice prizes that I paid a small fortune for from another lad. Um, so all of these are from kit the metal ones the shield upgrades the midnight that only one person's won so far no one's won a ZZ so we'll be putting some of these up how much do you charge for the acrylics and I mean your retail price not your trade price that we've been getting them for uh, so we have one of the GUIs that we've acquired to do. That's actually pretty good. These cost me like 18, 15 to 18 pound each for them ones. So again, all of these are going on the prize wall. So we'll have some of K's stuff up on the prize wall as like the top end prizes. And then we'll have just some of the normal cards on there as well. So what you do is you'll buy a ticket for a fiver on the live stream. I'll take it off the wall and... Oh, so they are exclusives. Cool. So yeah, I'll then... So yeah, if you, if you buy a ticket, it'll have a number. You then get to see me open that ticket for you as that envelope or whatever I'm going to do it with. Open that, show you it. That's what you get. That's your prize. Um, they'll, they'll always be worth the fiver I promise that things like there'll be metal cards there'll be promos that we've costed 
and they'll always be worth doing. Um, Martin's been part of it before for James's stream, um, and it's good fun. James normally sells out of 24 of them in literally the first half hour of his stream. It is like a feeding frenzy. But we're, we're, we're going to do it tomorrow night. We're going to have a bit of Mompok. I'll do some um, impromptu prizes that we've been working on as well, as well as the prize wall. Or the... I don't know what James calls, calls it. So we'll be on from 7 again. And hopefully I'll... I'll, I'll I'm try I'm looking round to where I can actually set it up because I'm very limited for space. I'm thinking somewhere here. Or somewhere there or but yeah. Oh, hand. Forget about what hand going up. Yep. So what time? It is nine o'clock here now. So two hours ago. <laughs> yeah so we're going to wrap it up there thank you everyone for the follows, subscriptions um, and everything tonight we'll be back tomorrow I'll do some five hours off <laughs> I'll do some more I say, I'll get the Mompok stuff out I'll probably do the one that Tomo mentioned because I do have a spare Globicus um, so catch us all tomorrow uh, stay safe good night all